Now there's one question I get every single time I show a photograph that I've taken with my iPhone. Just how big could you print them? Pretty big. Now if you know anything about me, you'll know that I am a big fan of printing my images. Nothing beats a physical print. No matter how good the displays we use, there's nothing like a print for really showing you the quality of the file and revealing the good and the bad. And I'm sure I would feel exactly the same way if I was using another brand of camera, I mean phone. But that's a 72 inch print, 72 inches, that I took with my iPhone and it genuinely looks fantastic. And apart from one little bit at the end, it was all edited in Lightroom Mobile and Photoshop on my iPad. That's just crazy. I remember when Lightroom Mobile was first launched and being in the audience and like, yeah. Now I think it's pretty fair to suggest that of the people that are asking the question, some are genuinely interested because they're embracing the technology. But there are definitely some naysayers, people who are resisting, but love it or loathe it, there's no escaping it. The quality is already mind blowing, but today is the worst it will be. Every second, every minute, it's being worked on, it's being developed, it's getting better and better. Do you know how many people on Apple work on the iPhone? A lot. Eight, mm. 800 and something was the last number a I A trillion heard. dollar company that, no, and that's their no, star product. They just yeah. work on, no, they just work on the camera. The camera. Just Over the, eight, I think it was like 827 people mm -hmm. just working on the camera. So let's have a quick look at the kit I used, the app I used to photograph the long exposure, and what I did to produce that whopping 72 inch print. So at the time of recording this, I'm using an iPhone 14 Pro Max with one terabyte of storage. And with that, I use a few lenses from an Italian company called Reflex. I've got a 210 degree fisheye, an 18 millimeter wide angle, and a 60 millimeter telephoto. These screw into the aperture on my phone case, which is also MagSafe. As for holders, I've tried a number of different ones, some small and light and really quick to attach the phone to, like this one from Joby. But the trouble with that one is the slightest breeze caused a bit of movement. My favorite now is the universal holder for photo and video by Small Rig. This comes with handles you can quickly screw into the sides, making it great for recording video footage. But I've screwed a couple of Arca Swiss plates, one on the short side and one on the long side. So I can use it with the ball head on my tripod and easily go from landscape to portrait orientation. The app I use for long exposure is Re-Expose and it's made by the same folks who make the lenses that I use. It's crazy easy to use with a super clean interface where you can easily change exposure, check focus, levels, and do a lot more, but it also shoots raw. So you'll get a DNG, a Bayer raw file, and can go from one second up to bulb mode for the long exposures just by scrolling the wheel. There's also an app on the Apple Watch that you can use to trigger the shutter. This comes in really handy, preventing movement by tapping the screen, but also for triggering the shutter without being right next to the camera, I mean phone. So I'd already printed an A3 of this image, which looks incredible. But for the 72 inch print, I had to scale it up. And for that, I used Topaz Gigapixel AI. In Lightroom, here's the edited image and we can see that the longest side is 4,008 pixels. The version I upscaled is this one labeled red, and if I click on it, you can see it's 17,280 pixels on the longest side. So over four times the original. I'll send this upscaled version into Photoshop. I'll go to image size, and just change the units to inches. So this is definitely the upscaled 72 inch version. But check this out. I mean, look, when I zoom in, the quality is incredible. So much detail, it's amazing. Now I really have to give a huge thanks to Jeff and the folks at Digital Lab who printed this for me. This is the lab that I used for printing all of the portraits I had in my World War II Veterans Exhibition and they looked fantastic. 
Quality and attention to detail is second to none. These are people who genuinely love what they do. Oh, and the print itself was done on Fujifilm Crystal Archive DP2 professional photographic paper. So what I got is classed as a digital C-type print. The paper is light sensitive like would be used in the traditional darkroom and the information making up the file is exposed onto the paper through red, green and blue LEDs. But yes, yeah, seriously impressed and excited about all of this stuff and where it's going. The fact that I can go out and take photographs like this with minimal kit that is extremely light and portable rather than lugging around a bag full of heavy lenses, filters, adapters and other stuff makes this a no-brainer. The quality is there and it's only going to keep on getting better and better. So anybody who says it isn't, well, I guess the same people said DSLRs wouldn't catch on either. To choose not to embrace it though, that's a personal choice and that's fine. But a flat out no, to not accept it and even say it's not real photography, well... Anyway, very exciting times ahead for anyone who embraces this stuff. But thinking of the year ahead, do I update my mirrorless camera to the latest model? Or do I upgrade my iPhone? Come to think of it, I always did like the number 15. Anyway, before I go, just to let you know about a completely new and free online event coming up from April 17th through April 20th. The Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit. 19 world-class instructors teaching 36 Photoshop classes over four days, covering such things as special effects, textures, blending, lighting, drawing, painting, compositing, and much more. I've added a link in the description where you can register for a free pass to all of the content. Right, that's all from me. So as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, click on subscribe because it's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me. I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.